Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach TWheel24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams24. Or you can call me at 404-542-607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Man show got a special guest for you. New Orleans Pelicans point guard Tony Douglas. Also, he's with a combo guard, fresh out of ATL, chilling in Florida for the off season. Tony, what's good, man? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. How everything going? Everything's going good, man. Can't complain, man. I got to ask you, man. This season was real good for you getting getting to play a lot, bro. So let me just see. All these teams seeing you play, see how you come off the bench this year, started some games for the Pelicans, playing real well, man. How do you feel if you know you're going to get to play virtually most nights with all the injuries you guys had this year in New Orleans? Um, you know, it's all mental, um, mental mindset. Um, obviously, we had a lot of injuries um, this year. But, um, you know, it tells us kind of team we have, regardless with those injuries. And I think, like, we had like four players come from the D League. <laughs> had to play like significant twenty five minutes a game, um, and we, I mean, we competed and we won. We won most of the, um, a lot of our games, or um, was even. Uh, we was on a little winning streak there towards the end of the season, and um, it just shows that we were able to just stay healthy. You know, from from the starters to the bench and the reserve players, and um, have good continuity that we could be a good team. Yeah, man, because I've never seen a, a team so snake bitten by injuries like you guys were, man, from Ryan Anderson to Anthony Davis, Eric Gordon, Holiday. You know, man, all you, all these cats that you think is going to be out on the court, man, is, is out. But for you, as being a guy who I support you, I'm happy to see you get in the play, show you all these teams in the league and put out that good film on you. So you had to feel good knowing that you played well, you did your part, try to make the sure this team win games. So all these teams in the league got to say Tony Douglas can to, to still play. Oh, most definitely, man. And this league is all about, you know, opportunity. And, you know, you could – one year you could be playing, and next year you could be totally different. But you got to stay with the same mentality, man, and stay working. And when you get your opportunity, see every moment of it. And, you know, that's what I did there in New Orleans. At the end, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a player that could, you know, still play in this league and, and, want, and want to continue to play. You know, nobody don't want to not play. And knowing that, especially knowing that you contribute to the team or to this league, you know? Yeah, yo, now, for folks, John, so I Tony Douglas here on the Boston Man Show, Pelicans combo guard here. Now, Tony, you play for Monty Williams and his system, going to Alvin Gentry's system. 
How difficult was that for you and your, your guys to transfer from playing under Coach Monty to play for Coach Alvin? And what are the differences in, in their styles of play? Um, well, for our team, um, Coach, Monty, Coach Monty Williams was like, it was real slow down, you know, run a play every time, you know, run through all the options. Um, it was, you know, we had a lot of talent on our team, and we had a lot of players who could, like, you know, it worked. You know, obviously it took a while for Monty Williams to get the players to play the way he wanted them to play and, and use everybody and, to their strength. But um, with Coach Alvin Gentry, you know, it wasn't difficult for me because I came in Mike D'Antoni's system, you know, okay. in New York, fast pace. So, you know, I was able – I could adjust to either or. Um, it's just that, you know, for three to four years playing the way Monty Williams played for, for my teammates, um, for the rest of the players, it was a little different, you know, from them – you know, knowing that, you know, it's a lot of read and react. You know, Coach Coach Alvin Gentry don't don't call a play every time. He wants you to read the defense, make quick, um, quick decisions, stuff like that. It was a little different um, from the jump. But towards the end, a little bit, we kind of got a rhythm and kind of got to feel what – everybody got to feel what he wanted and how, how he wanted us to play, play to our strengths. But I know next year um, – Going to training camp, he's, I know especially he's definitely going to establish the way how he wants the team to play. For sure. Folks, on Tony Douglas here on the Boss Man Show. Now, Tony, you was in the training camp in Indiana, training camp, they waved you off the cuts or what have you. Now, did you see Paul George being being back this early early this year, the way he is right now, playing good? It could, it could have beat Toronto, missed some shots late. It could have got that done. But did you, did you see Paul George recovering like that when he was out there in Indiana early this year? Most definitely. Um, I know when I was there, um, he was, you know, you know, he kind of have a chip on his shoulder. You know, a lot of people don't talk about him. You know, he's been hurt, been out for the whole season, basically the whole year almost. And, um, you know, he's coming back even stronger, more athletic, more, you know, more crafty with his moves. He's one of the top small fours in his league. <laughs> so um, I'm happy for him, man. Uh, you know, we always communicate to this day. Like, throughout the season, we was communicating a lot. I, I, built, a, I built a great relationship with him while my time was there in Indiana. Yes, indeed. And, and for those who don't know, you played ball in China for a year, man. If you could, show some of my listeners how the experience was playing overseas in China. Now, how is it over in China? Uh, it, was a, it was a great experience, man. Like, I don't regret doing that. Um, that was a great experience. Um, the, their culture there, um, you know, their basketball there. They love their, they love their players there, and they love for the players to compete, to win games, um, you know, I was shocked on playing over there how much exciting the games was packed and sold out each game for, you know, them to watch, you know, the American players and also their Chinese players that was um, there to play. Wow. And, and how was the food over there? Like, did that was like a American food over there for you guys? was all yeah. Chinese, Chinese food. How was it over there on, on that regard? No, no, you know, when I was over there, I ate. And then they, had, they had Americanized stuff. They had more each root, Chris. You just got to know. Like, whichever city you in, like, I was in a city called Neijin, not far from Xinhua, which is an Americanized city. So, uh, you know, I ate normal stuff. They had McDonald's. They had KFC. They had Subway. You know, they had Morton's Root Chris. There's a, you know, you just have to know which areas. Once you're there for a little bit, you have to know where to go get your food from, <laughs> stuff like that. So it, it was it wasn't no big adjustment for me because, you know, I'm able to to look for things and be able to navigate <laughs> you know? Folks, Tony Douglas here on the Boss Man Show. Now, Tony, now playing in the CBA over in China and playing the NBA, what's the difference in the rules and the style of play over there from the NBA playing over in China? Well, I know the rules like in China, uh, once you shoot the ball, on a, if you're on offense and you shoot the basketball and they um and you get an offensive rebound, the shot clock goes back to 14 on the clock. It goes to 14, not 24. You don't reset to 24. It resets to 14. Um, they let you play more physical, way a lot more physical over there, which you'd be shocked and surprised of um, over there. But they um, they really they really let you play a lot more. It's real physical <laughs> compared to the NBA now. You know, back in the 90s, you it was hardcore. Now these days. In the NBA, you can't really touch or, you know, just flagrant one, flagrant two, suspension, 
you know, and things that you don't really think that should be, but that is how the league became. I'm not saying that it's soft, it's just that it's a, yeah. they're, they're protecting the players a lot more in the NBA here these days compared to back in the 90s. And in the CBA, and, and over there, it's totally different. Like, it's real physical. Oh, wow. I can only imagine how physical that game is over there, man. And a rule I want to ask you about, man, is this the hack of whoever. Do you like that rule? Do you want to see it go away? Because I, I know for me, it's covering the games and working the games, man. It just makes for a hard watch. It makes it longer. So are you, are you, when you're out there playing, does the time take you out of a flow when you're going to go to the hack of whoever? Um, yeah, sometimes it can get you out of rhythm because, you know, you know, a lot of people I know as players and as fans, you want to be able to play the game, be in the rhythm. You want to see a flow, but you know, ain't no, as a coaching standpoint, you look at it like, Hey, listen, I'm trying, I'm doing whatever it takes to do to win this game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I can, I can see both sides of it, but sometimes the player, you know, I, obviously I want a rhythm, but obviously if I'm a player and I'm on, if I'm on that team that want to win a game, then hey. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> yeah. Doing the hack, whoever. <laughs> you try to get back into the game. So there's pros and cons of it. I'm um, dealing with the hack, whoever you want to name. Now, do you want to see them try underhanded? Would you want to do, do, do the Rick Barry way? Or is it too, it's too much pride? You don't want to be a Jordan crying face meme if you do if you do the underhanded. You don't want to do that, do you? Uh, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. So, man, I'll ask you this, man. What is it like to have a brother who plays professional sports like you do and Harry? Like, it has to be cool for you guys to talk about struggles or whatever you got, you're going through, you can share it with your brother because both of you play professional sports, man, and your parents got to be happy. You know, Jonesboro's own, two of their own guys in two of the best leagues in America playing, playing at a high level, man. So how does it feel for you guys to be each, with each other playing so great into your 30s like this? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Um, you know, sometimes me and my brother, we talk about it, we'll be like, ah, Lee, he's already on, going on nine years, I'm going on eight. <laughs> it goes by so fast, and um, it's a blessing. Um, we're very blessed. We don't take anything for granted. You know, we've been through a lot, obviously, through since we were middle school, high school, you know, AAU circuit and all that type of stuff. Um, you know, we had to work for everything we got, and it, it makes you appreciate it a lot more and it, it, you don't take nothing for granted you know uh we've been very blessed for already being elite me being elite for eight years my brother being elite going on his ninth year that's a blessing so it's a great and my mom and dad they're very proud they come to travel see us play a lot and one thing i love my parents um you know to this day a lot of people be like oh you know your parents have to work them well my parents my mom and dad work to this day still <laughs> that's what they like to do they work <laughs> um yeah. And they don't stop. <laughs> so um, I love them. I love them, man. They 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 did a great job raising us. Yes, indeed. And speaking of your mom and dad, I know they helped with your yeah. guys' foundation. Your foundation have any camps coming up for the summer for the kids? Douglas Brothers Foundation. Y'all have any events coming up in, in the near future? Um, we got some events coming up. Back to school drive in August. First week in August, we have we give out um, school supplies down there at, Jones, at my high school, Jonesboro um, High, in um, Clayton County, Georgia. Um, that's a big event, and we also have a Christmas event um, that sometimes I can't make it to because we always I'm always in a plan on Christmas. Um, but the the next one would be back to school drive. All right, and Tony, the first so, week in August, it's a big event. Now I'll tell you that Christmas, the Christmas events you all have is great, man. I went to it this year, man. I play horses with some of you, your boys. Your boy Jake Jumper is not that great, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop there playing horse, man. Jake was like, man, like really? And Harry was trying to clown me, Tony, because I'm out there in my in, in, in my church shoes, hooping, playing horse. He's like, you got all your church shoes? I, like, I sure do, man. I had to come look professional. I'm a media man, you know, but I'm out there playing <laughs> in my Stacey Adams, bro. I mean, but he would give me all the time about it. But Jake Jumper. Man, it was it was broke, man. a <laughs> trip, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now let me ask, man. So this is who want to know this about you, Tony. What is your typical day in off season? You training like in the morning, or you shooting, get some shots up, or you just hanging out with the fam? So, so how, how do you balance working out and just relaxing this in the off season, bro? Oh man, this is so how you say that. Um, right now I'm back home in Orlando. That's where my main house at. Uh, with my wife and my son. So. Um, I, I work out every morning. I tell you, me and my son, my son, he's four, so he comes with me. So he comes with me to the gym. He loves ball. So that's good. I just take him with me to the gym, work out on the court. 
I do uh, for like 45 minutes and I, I lift weights. I get in a hot tub and cold tub and I come back, then, you know, I'm on daddy duty then. So, so I kind of like to kind of like do two things at once, you know, I try to help my wife out in off season because I was with him in season because I'm always traveling and gone. So uh, little Tony Jr. be with me everywhere I go. <laughs> and it's good because I have a boy that he's in, he's in good. He loves ball. So, you know, I don't mind him being with me while I'm training and working out. He also see a lot of stuff that I do. Which is great. He picks up on. Hey, you can't beat that. Daddy son time have him on the on the court shooting ball, man, already. So we have another, another Doug Douglas is about to be in the NBA real soon, we see. <laughs> in about fifteen, twenty years. We see that coming right now. <laughs> we go we, we gonna claim it now. We're gonna claim it now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> now final question for you, Tony. The playoffs is, is going good, man. Who do you see getting to the finals? If, if Golden State has a healthy Curry, will they beat the Spurs? Or you, I know you played them all. So who do you see being in the finals this year, man? Who do you think will end up winning? If, if if Curry if Curry is healthy, I see the I see the Spurs getting there. I mean I mean I see the Golden State Warriors getting there. If the Spurs, I mean if if the, if Curry is um, healthy, I say Golden State come out the West. I say Cleveland Cavaliers come out the East. All righty, it will. Hey, like, like, probably, hey, what I call you on final time, hey, come on, finals, talk to the final talk with the Tonys. I'll tell you, bro, I'm a bit, we'll be we'll fans of here at the Boss Man Show here in the ATL, man. We got you back, man. We love what you and your brother do, man. So, you know, if you want to come on the show, man, anytime, you're welcome, bro. And have fun in Orlando, the hometown. When I come to town, man, with the holidays, because like I told you, my, my dad got a place in Winter Garden all up the road. So, I'll be right up the street from you, bro. <laughs> Okay, most definitely. Yeah, anytime, hit me up. Um, I'll be I'll be in Atlanta too a lot uh, this summer. Atlanta and Florida's home, so that's where I'll be at. No doubt, well, folks. Tony does on the boss, man. So Tony, take it easy, brother. We'll talk to you real soon, man. All right, man. Thank you for having me. No doubt, folks. Tony does on the boss, man. Show coming up. Most boss man show after the break. Shake <laughs> Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathletics.com. Consulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. 